Today we're going to talk about selecting a proper carburetor. The main focuses we're going to speak about today are going to be the overall size and type of the carburetor that you're going to choose. So we're going to start by talking about selecting a proper carburetor size. Carburetor sizing is a very important aspect of selecting the correct carburetor for your overall combination. One thing you want to avoid doing is selecting a carburetor that is too large for your overall combination. It's commonly referred to as Moore's Law. A lot of people think that Moore is better when it comes to carburetor selection. It's anything but the case. It's very important to make sure that you select the proper carburetor to give you overall drivability, throttle response, and the characteristics that somebody's looking for on a daily driver or even a race application. So your selection is going to depend if it's a race application or a street car. There are some differences in between. When we talk about carburetor sizing, we initially talk about selecting one for a street application. When we talk about selecting a carburetor for a street application or even a race application, one of the tools that Holly's provided for you to make it easy and take a little bit of the guesswork out of it is the Holly Carburetor Selection Tool. You can view that tool and utilize it by going to www.holly.com. It will allow you to put in some specific information relative to your combination and it will give you a directional guide as to available carburetors that Holly has available on the Holly as well as the Demon Carburetor line that will fit your specific needs. When you're dealing with carburetors, there's also a generalized formula that you can use. A common example would be to take a 406 cubic inch small block Chevrolet at 6500 RPM. If you take the engine displacement times maximum RPM, it would give you a total of 2,639,000. You can then take that total and divide it by 3456. It's an easy formula to remember. It's engine displacement times maximum RPM divided by 3456. In this case, it would give us a total of around 764 CFM, which if you round it down a little bit, brings you in about 750 CFM. Now it's based at 100% volumetric efficiency. That formula would be good for a performance application where you're really focused more on mid to upper RPM performance potential. If you stay a little bit smaller on the carburetor, it's going to give you better low to mid end characteristics as far as throttle response and general low to mid RPM drivability. If you look at that engine at approximately a, what we refer to as a 85% volumetric efficiency, which you normally have in a street stock to mild application, that'll put you in at about a 650 CFM carburetor. That general difference of 100 CFM can really make a broad difference when it comes to the overall characteristics and drivability of the vehicle. So next we're going to talk about carburetor types. We've talked about size, and let's talk about the overall types of carburetors that are available. What we see before me are two common, what's commonly referred to as a modular Holly design carburetor, which most people refer to as a model 4150 or 4160 carburetor. The carburetor down here on the bottom is a single feed, vacuum secondary, side hung bowl carburetor. This style of carburetor has been around for years and is an excellent type of carburetor choice for an average street application. The second carburetor we're looking at is a Holley double pumper. Everybody knows a Holley double pumper. It's been really the staple for performance applications for several decades now, and it's still one of the most popular carburetors we produce today. Some of the differences that kind of go into play with what we're talking about with carburetor sizing, when we talk about a vacuum secondary carburetor, we talked about Moore's Law, a Holley vacuum secondary carburetor will actually self-regulate itself based on engine demand. If you were to look underneath the carburetor, if I open the throttle wide open, you'll see that the primary throttle blades open all the way, but the secondaries don't. As engine demand increases, the demand for additional airflow as well increases for additional performance and RPM, and the carburetor when properly tuned will have a vacuum controlled diaphragm that will open up the secondaries. Where this is really key is if you do select a carburetor that's a little bit oversized for your application, it will do everything within its power to regulate and to reduce that overall amount of airflow to maintain optimum air velocity and efficiency through the carburetor. And when you get into a double pumper carburetor, what you will find is when you go to wide open throttle, the primary and secondaries automatically open. That's going to give you an application that requires a rapid increase in RPM that has the actual need and the ability to handle that rapid increase in airflow. 
Some of the common differences that you would run into as far as uses, if you have a vehicle that's heavier weight, low to mid RPM, street drivability, automatic transmission, a vacuum secondary carburetor can give you much better throttle response and overall drivability and characteristics. When you deal with a double pump Holley carburetor, it's really key to have this match to the requirements. A double pump carburetor is generally going to be properly suited for a lightweight vehicle, generally with a manual transmission with a lot of gear, or an automatic with a loose performance converter that's going to allow it to build RPM rapidly. Without getting too technical, one of the things to kind of think about carburetor functionality, it's a lot like an aircraft. If you think of a wing of an airplane, you need a certain amount of airspeed to generate lift and sustain flight. Otherwise, the wing stall, the plane crashes. A carburetor works really in the same way. The airspeed through the Venturi creates a pressure drop that gives you a fuel signal. The higher the air velocity is through the Venturi of the carburetor, the stronger that signal is and the better the overall performance and response is going to be in the characteristics of that carburetor. So you really want to make sure that you match the carburetor based on your specific requirements. One of the other carburetors that we have released through the Demon line is the Street Demon. This kind of breaks convention a little bit compared to a modular single feed 4160 and a double pump 4150 carburetor. And the design characteristics of it, if you look at the bottom of the carburetor, when we open the throttle, you will see that they physically open like a double pumper. But when we look at the top, you'll see that the only section that's open with the choke is the primary. They have an adjustable air valve that's at the back that based on physical demand, will open very similar to a vacuum secondary holly. So their characteristics are kind of a blend between the two. We offer the Street Demon in a 625 as well as a 750 CFM application and version. These carburetors are ideally suited to a stock to mild performance street application. They give you excellent throttle response. Instead of a conventional modular design holly, this is a two-piece design. There are no actual exposed fuel surfaces below the top gasket level. And these are a really nice addition that we've created to the Holly product line. So we've talked about size of carburetor and we've talked about some general types of carburetors. One of the things we want to speak about as well is the choke. Some carburetors are equipped with a choke, some carburetors are equipped without a choke, and there are different types of chokes. Depending on the area that you live in, especially relative to climate, may dictate whether or not you need a choke or you may want to have a choke. And there are some pros and cons to having a carburetor with and without choke in different types. First type of carburetor choke we're going to talk about is going to be an electric choke. A lot of Holly carburetors are designed with an automatic electric choke. It makes for simple operation. All the end user has to do when they're installing the carburetor is wire a switch 12 volt wire to the choke housing, to the cap. And when the key is on the engine's running, it will basically power up the choke. As it's powered up, it heats up. And as it heats up, it rotates and it opens up the choke. When a vehicle cools off, it allows it to close. It's coming from an automatic electric choke. Another type of choke we have is a manual choke. A manual choke requires an actual physical connection of a control cable that is run into the passenger compartment of the vehicle where it can be controlled by the operator. Of course, it requires manual intervention for it to function. One of the benefits that you can run into with an electric choke is it kind of takes the guesswork and the need to manually operate a cable out of the mix. When you deal with a manual choke, it gives you full control. One of the things a lot of times you see is when you start getting into more higher end performance carburetors for street and strip use, you start getting into a carburetor that generally is going to either have a manual choke or and we'll talk about in a moment our Ultra XP style carburetors, some of our street HPs that do not have a choke at all. One of the benefits to having a manual choke performance application a lot of times is because of the design of the intake manifold, the camshaft, you may or may not need much choke or you may need to give it a lot of initial choke and then take it off rapidly and you have that overall control whereas with an automatic choke it sort of limits you a little bit. You can adjust how hard the choke is on, how fast it comes off, but you just don't have that finite control. Me personally, if I'm going to run a choke, I prefer mechanical choke. Maybe it's just because I want to have that control over it, but it's generally for me personally what I would prefer. Another option that you can have would be more of a race specific carburetor that has no choke at all. 
Where this can be a little bit problematic is if it is a street vehicle, you live in a cold climate, the vehicle can be a little harder to start. It can be more temperamental at cold operation. Those of you that run a vehicle without a choke, you know the deal. You get in there, it's cold. You got to pump the throttle. You got to find it, trying to find a sweet spot. You get the engine to start. You got to feather the throttle, and you basically have to babysit your engine until it comes up to temperature. Whereas if you're utilizing a physical choke, you don't have to do as much babysitting. Automatic choke will work automatically. Manual choke, as the engine warms up, you physically just push the choke off. You will find that depending on your climb, as we discussed, it's more critical. So if you have somebody that, for example, I've got some friends that live in North Pole, Alaska, they're going to want to have a choke. I've also got some friends that live in South Florida. Chances are they won't need a choke. When it comes to choke selection and the need for one, it really boils down to personal preference. You just need to understand that if you do not have a vehicle with a choke, that it can be hard to cold start. And until that engine gets up to operating temperature, it can tend to be a little bit temperamental. It may want to hesitate. It could potentially backfire. So you need to understand the difference of having a choke and not and some of the overall characteristics when you're selecting a carburetor. We've talked about size, we've talked about type, and we've talked about chokes. Let's talk about finish. This particular double pump performer has our classic dichromate finish. This is a finish that's been around for decades. It's characterized by the overall gold type of appearance to the carburetor. This type of finish is really popular with older muscle car owners, people doing restorations. They want to keep that nostalgic ear and period correct appearance for their vehicle. This finish will commonly be found on our classic double pumper series of carburetors. Times have changed a little bit and people want something that's a little bit more fancy or a little bit of bling for lack of a better term. And one of the features that we have on a lot of our carburetors now is the shiny finish. It's featured on a lot of our aluminum as well as our zinc based street HP carburetors and it's a tumble polish finish that gives you a nice shiny appearance. One of the other finishes that we have is the hardcore gray. You'll find this featured on some of our new Ultra Street Avengers the Ultra Double Pumpers, as well as the Ultra XP series of carburetors. The hardcore gray finish is not only there for appearance, and granted, you can't deny that it looks fantastic. It gives you that rugged, strong, aggressive look. I always talk about black being the new chrome, but it goes beyond overall appearance. This particular hardcore gray finish is a mil-spec hard coat anodizing, and it's anodized both externally as well as internally. What that does, as well as giving you good looks, it gives you corrosion protection. A lot of your newer race fuels are pretty exotic with some of the chemical combinations in them, as well as the ethanol and oxygen as in pump gas that can lead to corrosion problems. And this not only gives you aggressive looks, it also gives you protection against those corrosive properties of a lot of your modern pump fuels. Next carburetor we bring to, I'm going to turn around so you can see it a little bit better and angle it up, is a combination of a shiny finish as well as a bright dip anodized meter and block and base plate combination. This particular Ultra Street Avenger is featured with silver and red. This style of carburetor is also available in silver and blue as well as silver and black. We do have the multicolor combinations available in the Ultra Street Avengers, the Ultra Double Pumpers, the Ultra XPs, as well as some of the Gen 3 Dominators we have available. The last finish I want to talk about is we see here on our 625 as well as the 750 CFM Street Demons. Well, it's also a black finish. You'll see that the overall appearance is slightly different. This particular finish that's offered on the Street Demon is a black ceramic coating. It gives you that rugged good look as well as being ceramic coating. It gives you a lot of durability. The Street Demon is also available in two other finishes. It's available in the shiny tumble polish type of finish that we talked about on the modular hollies, as well as a basically a hand polish, almost a mirror type of finish that's available on that carburetor as well. Some of the other things to keep in mind when you are dealing with a carburetor that I really should have talked about on types, I just want to cover really quick, is fuel inlet types. In this particular style of carburetor, it is a single fuel inlet, which simply requires a single fuel line from your fuel pump and regulator and supply to feed the carburetor. When you get into our classic modular 4160 type of street holly, it also is available with a single feed. It's got a single feed that a primary fuel bolt and is a transfer tube that feeds fuel to the secondary. The other application and style of carburetor you have is you see on the 
Ultra XP is what's commonly referred to as a dual feed. The dual feed is generally going to also be characteristically associated with a center hung or cathedral type of fuel bowl. When you're selecting your carburetors, really keep that in mind that if you are selecting a carburetor, it's a dual feed. That when you're hooking things up, you need to remember to hook up a fuel line to both fuel bowls. Every once in a while, we will get a call on the tech line. We get a customer that went from a single feed carburetor to a dual feed carburetor. They weren't thinking about it, they just hook up a single fuel line and when they open up that second area and there's no fuel there, well, we're talking about that stumble situation again. So just make sure that you really plan out your installation, match up your size, your type, your choke, and your overall finish that really complements your combination and gives you a nice rounded out balance for good looks as well as drivability, performance, and cold start reliability.